Pinata is always the answer. we got here is a 1996 Mazda Miata manual transmission 1.8 liter I uh, don't know the status of the engine transmission and as you can see the suspension is completely taken apart so in order to get this thing on the trailer we're gonna have to get a little creative and as you can see we uh, came prepared The idea that ended up working very well was jack the car up with 4x4s, then slide the stainless steel cart under and set it on the cart, strap it down with ratchet straps, and then using the cart uh, to push it onto the trailer. Loading the car onto the trailer was time consuming and a little difficult because of the space constraints as well as the, let's call it the, the road condition. But with, you know, being able to push it and then using the come along, yeah, we got it on there. The idea with the white Miata is to get it running and then we'll have a second autocross Miata. Let's see if we can get it done before 2024 season. I knew Miata. I do. What? Two Miatas? came across an interesting ad online, so after speaking with the seller, we sent the money over, bought the car sight unseen, and here we are, picking them up. Let's see what we got ourselves into. how hard the white Miata was to load. The blue Miata, much easier. Turned right on, drove it right onto the trailer. Piece of cake. So the reason we bought this old rusty Miata is because of the hardtop and the Torsen rear end. So we're going to use this as a parts car. It's got an engine, transmission, Torsen, hardtop, all interior. And we're going to part it out and then you know, get rid of it. Use whatever parts we need for the white car. and. Then we'll just scrap the rest of it. This Miata was driven year round, so unfortunately the rust has eaten it away. We do have some things we can save on it, so we're going to strip it out, take the parts we can, and then move on. We know the engine runs, so we're going to keep that, and all things considered, it doesn't have that many miles on it, so we're going to keep this as a spare. Pulling motors on Miatas is a piece of cake, and there's tons of videos on YouTube for more directions. Basically, unhook everything, pull it out. Thank you. 
Now that we have the motor and transmission pulled out, we're going to move on to the rear torsion. But with how rusty it is, there's no way it's going to come out. so bad we didn't even try. We just went right to cut. This is the last important piece we need of Mo Blue. Now we can send it on its way. Out with the old and in with the new, as the phrase goes. But since we only have one trailer, we have to get Daisy inside so that we can put Old Blue on the trailer and send them home. Just like loading up, unloading was tedious, but we were able to manage without it falling off the trailer. Loading Old Blue wasn't that easy, since we only had two wheels in the front, and one of them was stuck. Using a floor jack and some skates, we were able to get it on the trailer. Getting it off might be more difficult. Or not. Let's see. The white Miata's engine is completely in pieces, and we have no idea why. Maybe the previous owner was taking it apart because it was having engine troubles, but we know the engine from the blue Miata works well, so we're going to take this one out, slap in the one from Old Blue. We don't plan on using this motor right now or transmission. It'll be nice to have it for extra parts and to see how things are supposed to go back together. With the engine and transmission out, there's no better opportunity to give it a quick clean. Wish I could take it out and power wash it, but the air hose, maybe a little bit of degreaser, it'll turn out just fine.
Now we have to refresh the engine on Old Blue. First order of business is to tear down the engine and transmission from Old Blue. We're not going to do a ground up rebuild. We're going to replace leaking parts or belts and anything else that looks like it needs attention. With the engine and transmission out now, there's no better time to do the clutch and resurface the flywheel. belts will be replaced and we're mixing and matching best parts from both engines. Since we're in there doing the timing belt, we figured we'd do the water pump as well. This is as far as we're going to tear it down, so now we got to start replacing it with new parts. For this engine refresh, we're going to start by get, scraping off any old gasket material, replacing everything with new gaskets, and just putting it back together. taking a calculated risk by not replacing everything and building this motor from the ground up. We figured since it runs, if we just give it its maintenance parts, it should continue to run and probably perform just as good, if not better. There's a million different YouTube videos on how to set your timing on your Miata, so I recommend checking out a few of them and trying a few of them and see what works best for you. Cleaning out the valve cover area and putting a little 
seal in on the corners. The valve cover is ready to go and closing up the engine. Using the old bearing, we were able to push in the new bearing on our freshly surfaced flywheel. those pieces together it's time to put the engine and transmission back together so we can drop it into the car in one piece. Time to stick this thing back in and See if it works. So now begins the process of dropping the refreshed engine into Daisy. This is the engine from Old Blue that we refreshed with new parts. It was fighting us a little bit and it turns out we broke an engine mount. Luckily we had an extra one and were able to get it all squared away. We wanted to assemble it as much as possible before trying to crank it, so we just put on everything and it's a lot of fiddly bits, but I think we were able to figure everything out. We topped the radiator up with new antifreeze and gas, 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 gas. It was also really exciting when we plugged the battery in and the lights went down. Our mistake here was we mixed up the return and feed lines for the fuel. Now that the car is running, we can start dialing it in. The, as you can hear, the idle is really high. We're going to turn that back get it where we want it, as well as wheels and tires and sway bars and interior, all those little things still need to get done. There's a dent in the front part of the support bar. The only reason we're replacing it is because we can't get the hood latch on it. It cosmetically will be covered completely by the bumper. So first we cut it to weaken it, then we tried prying it with a screwdriver, and then we moved to the slide hammer. As you can see it's moving, but only the front part is, so we moved to a pry bar and then a bigger pry bar, but still it's just not moving in the back, so we have to think of something different. Our new plan is to stretch the car out so we have to weld and repair everything that we have cut and bent so that it can be ready to yeah, pull.
due to the prying we're going to have to massage this a little bit to make it fit but yeah no problem we have an anchor point in the barn where we're going to attach the front of the Miata to and the back of the car will be attached and anchored to a tree outside of the barn. The idea is when we use the come along it's going to pull that dent uh, forward enough so that we can get the uh, mechanism on there so that we can actually latch the hood. And voila, it worked like a charm. Now we can put the bumper back together and man, this thing is basically ready to go. We got our hands on a torsion diff, so we decided to swap out the open diff for the torsion one. It's going fine until we got to this bolt and we ended up rounding it off. We tried with some vice grips and when that didn't work we had to switch to something a little stronger, so we got out the grinder. don't have a seal puller tool, definitely try and get one. They're really handy. Next we dropped the housing in the parts washer and cleaned it up. The parts washer really is the unsung hero in the cleaning world. The old seals make a good buffer when pounding in the new seals. Highly recommend. Just as a precaution, we used a little bit of air to make sure we didn't have any debris in the den.
Replacing the bushings is also very necessary and very easy. So, as you see, grease, push it in, grease, push it in. And with that complete, it is time to put it back in the car. It's a very straightforward process, simply making sure everything lines up, it bolts right up, uh, attach it to the power pad frame and you're good to go. Something we weren't sure about when starting this was how to remove the axles and how to put them back in. There's no tricks to it. They simply pry out, use your pry bar, and they simply push in. There's no tricks or components or anything. It's that simple. One of the most time consuming parts of this job is just getting the suspension back together. As you can see there's a lot of parts and you have to do it twice but luckily our car isn't so rusty so everything went off and is going back on really without a hitch. As you can see we do not have exhaust on the car. Uh, we had to take it off so that we could get the torsion in and out or the diff in and out and this is what our exhaust is and what we're working with it is a cobbled pos no cat it's not going to do the trick we got to replace this thing and this is the beautiful exhaust we're going to be replacing it with we've already installed the cat and now we're going to just bolt up this uh very shiny looking exhaust system <laughs> Everything fit exactly where it was supposed to go. Now the only thing we have to do is just figure out where we're going to cut for the extra exhaust to come out of. And this is how it turned out. Man, it looks sharp. It looks good, but let's see what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 